welcome back to another Space Invaders arcade game tutorial. I'm Matt with Nightrun Studio, and in this tutorial we'll look at how to spice things up a little bit by adding some explosions. Let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to need to do to create some explosions is to get started by adding in some sprites. I've already got three frames of an explosion here that I will be using, and I'm just going to drag those into my sprites folder. Once I've imported my sprites here, I'm just going to shift click all three of them, head over here into my inspector and just change my pixels per unit to 32, which will get my sizing better. I'm also going to change my filter mode to point, format to 32 bit and apply that. I'm now gonna head over to my hierarchy and I'm just gonna create an empty game object, which I will call explosion. While clicked on the explosion, I now wanna add an animation to this explosion. Now I've already got an animation pane here already, but if you do not, you'll just want to go up to the top of your screen, click on window, go down to animation and open the animation pane. I'm going to drag mine up here so that I can see my sprites and animation at the same time. While you're clicked on your explosion game object, we're just going to click create animation. I like to save mine for now right in the sprites folder and I'll just call this one explosion. And at this point, we can actually use this timeline here to drag in our graphics. So I'll start with my first image, drag that up here. Then my next one for now, I'm gonna put them 10 frames apart, but we can change that later. And finally, my third frame. All right, so right now I can cycle through my animation. That's looking pretty good. I can also hit the play button here. You get a bit of a feel for it, but you'll notice it's doing something weird on that last frame. It's kind of jittery. The reason for that is because right now I get 10 frames for the first animation, 10 for the second. The last one only shows for one frame and then resets. The easiest way to fix that is to simply grab your last frame, Command C to make a copy, go down 10 more frames and add it in. So now we'll get a full 10 frames. I can play that. It's looking much better. I'm going to just put my animation tab back down here now. And one last thing I want to do is while clicked on your explosion animation down here, there's this thing called loop time. Now, when we bring this into the game, we do not want our explosion to be looping over and over again. We just want it to play once and then go away. So I'm going to click that off. Now, at this point, if we were to go back to our animation and play it, it would play through, but what would actually happen in the game, it would play through and then it would be left at the end with a explosion sitting in your screen, which is definitely not the effect you want. So I'm just going to go to the very next frame on my timeline and then I'm going to add a property. I'm going to go into my sprite render and what we just want to do is turn it off. So where it says enabled, we'll hit the plus button. Now at the moment, this is actually enabling the sprite, which is not what we want, but by unclicking this box, it will disable it. So now when we spawn this into the game, we'll get our explosion animation and at the end, it'll disappear. All right, now that we've got our animation working, we are ready to do a little bit of coding. So I'm gonna head into my scripts folder here and we don't need a new script for this. We're actually gonna put this one into your projectile script. And you'll remember here is where we have the projectile destroying the enemy game object. This is also where we're going to spawn in our explosion so that it can animate the enemy being destroyed. So to start off, we're just going to head up to the top here underneath our class. We're going to create a public game object. I'm going to call this one explosion prefab. This will just allow our script to know what it is. It's spawning into the game. We can then head down here and after we hit the enemy, but before we destroy it, we're going to spawn in a, our animation. To do this, remember we are using instantiate, which is unity code for spawn and then we'll get our brackets. Now inside of these brackets, there's going to be three things we need to know. First of all, what are you spawning in, which is our explosion prefab. Then a common wants to know where it's going to be, which will be just at the transform dot position of our projectile when it hits the enemy. And finally, what is the rotation? We're gonna type in quaternion. Remember quaternion is like a vector three for rotation. It just lets it know how we're rotating, but we're not actually rotating it at all. So it's just gonna keep its identity. Semicolon that thing up. And we've now got our instantiate explosion code all finished. Now at the moment, if I were to go into my prefabs, click on my projectile, you'll notice that our script now has a spot for the explosion prefab. The only thing is we've not yet made an explosion prefab. We've just created a game object. 
In order to make it a prefab, we're just going to click it and drag it down here into prefabs. Now that we have our explosion prefab, we can drag that on over into our projectile. So our projectile now knows what explosion it's going to spawn into the game. We can now take this explosion out of the game by deleting it. And one other thing I'm going to do is at the moment, when I click on my explosion and we open up the sprite renderer, you'll notice that it's currently in currently zero order in layer, which means it's going to be showing up if we click on our ships for a second and we look at their sprite renders, they're also at zero. So they're both in the exact same layer, which means sometimes our explosion might show up on top of them, sometimes underneath them, but we want the explosion to eclipse the enemy ships when it destroys them. So I'm going to click on my explosion and here in sprite renderer, I'm just going to move it up one layer so that it will always be on top of the ships that it's destroying. All right, and that should do the trick. We've now got explosions when we destroy our enemies. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Thanks for watching.